As a DP, you don't often have to bring everything to set. You just really have to bring your own personal items and things that might help you, tools that might help you in your day, whether it be getting an exposure or getting a frame or looking over the shot list and the storyboards and the script and whatever you've got. But despite having an assistant on set, I still like to bring my Leatherman, which has a bunch of tools that I can use throughout the day. It just makes things easier on sets where you have an assistant who might be tied up doing something else and you don't really have other help around and you need to do something now it's nice to have something on you that can help you do that. So I've got a, a knife, a pair of scissors, I've got screwdrivers, I've got pliers. Everything I need is pretty much right here and I keep it on my belt. You have seen me speak about this Leatherman before, uh, but somebody in the comments of that video also mentioned that knives may not be uh, legal in your country. That That's very true. I didn't actually think about that because it's just such a common place here, everybody on set has one. But yes, if you do know that that is something illegal in your country, of course, don't do it. Now, a lot of people would say that this is completely unnecessary on sets now when you've got so many different tools and options available on your cameras to get an accurate measurement for exposure, but I really do like using my light meter as well. I really like using false color, but a light meter does help me work out what the ratio is in a scene. And the spot meter on this thing is absolutely perfect for making sure you have very accurate measurements of very accurate spots. So not a lot of people use them, but I use it a lot. Except the battery's dead in mine and I've been meaning to replace it, but I'm too lazy. A portable phone charging brick. I almost always have one of those in my bag, simply because you never know when your phone's gonna die. It could be a very long day on set and your phone may decide to perish halfway through. I also tend to use a lot of apps on my phone, like my phone's camera, as well as things like CadRage, Cat, Cadridge, Cadrage. One of you lovely subscribers put me onto them and I really do like that app. It's a director's viewfinder app. It gives me a lot of different options for cameras and lenses. And basically it changes the field of view of your camera on your phone to mimic what it would be on a camera that you're going to be using on set. So it's really nice to just throw that in a corner and kind of get an idea of what your frame will be before you even put the camera in there. Really good pre-visualization tool, but it sucks up battery life. So long-winded way of saying I take a phone charger with me. I also like to bring a hard drive along because taking a copy of the footage is just something that I've become accustomed to. You never know when you might not be able to get a hold of the footage when it comes to cutting your reel together. So it's always nice to have a copy yourself. And in cases where it's appropriate, you just ask the production, hey, am I cool to use this footage for my reel to show what I can do? And most productions don't really care if you take another backup anyway, because it means less stress on them. And there's a backup in a different location to where they're taking the other two drives. Next up, a copy of the script or in the case of a long form production and you're doing things over multiple days I'll take whatever pages we're doing that day. In Australia we call those sides they're usually half size printed scripts or just the pages that we're doing that day or the next day and we usually get them the night before. I don't know what you call them in your part of the world if you do call them something different leave a comment down below. So if you've been on this channel a while, you'll know that I use an iPad for pretty much all of my pre-visualization and all of the pre-production. So all of my notes are on here. I'll bring it with me on set as well because then I've got access to all of that stuff. And if I need to reference something again, it's there, it's handy. I can also use that as a tool to be able to sketch out any shot ideas that may come up on the day. You don't need an iPad though. I also bring a notepad and a pen anyway because it's just nice to have something as a hard copy instead of digital. Now, depending on the job and if I've got the time to do so, I will also bring a camera or two. I'll bring my Fuji or I'll bring this Canon A1 or I'll bring both. It's nice to take photos behind the scenes of what you're doing, what your setups are, maybe take a few shots of things behind the scenes so that you can use them on your YouTube channel like I do. And some important things, it is important on set to be as environmentally friendly as you possibly can be. Every little bit helps and having things that are reusable is a good step and a good start. I have a keep cup because if there's coffee on set, I'm gonna want one. And if I want a coffee, I don't wanna put it into a cup that isn't reusable. I'm gonna feel a lot better about putting my coffee into a cup that isn't just gonna go straight into landfill when I'm done with it. And when I sometimes get three coffees in a day, it just makes sense. But you've gotta stay hydrated as well. So having a water bottle, that isn't plastic is a good idea. This one's a double wall bottle as well. So it's thermal, which means if you put cold water in it at the start of the day, it's going to be cold at the end of the day, which is an absolute godsend on sets where you're outside all day and it's sunny and you've left your water bottle in the sun, but you pick it up and it's hot on the outside and then you open it up and you drink some and it's freezing cold. The best feeling 
Not to mention that water bottles are seemingly the biggest waste on a film set. Lots of film sets buy water bottles in big pellets and then just hand them out on set and then people forget that the water bottle is theirs, they don't label it correctly, they put it down on set and they forget about it and then somebody else picks it up and just throws it in the bin so that person goes and gets another water bottle and it just keeps going. It's a lot of waste so get your own water bottle and stay hydrated and caffeinated. So thank you very much for watching this fairly short video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If there's anything that you feel that I'm missing, I mean, this is just what I carry in my bag. What do you carry in yours? Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear it. Also, if you have any ideas of what you would like to see on this channel, I'm trying to get ahead with my video schedule and uploads. So it's always nice to have a constant flow of ideas. If you have any ideas of what you want to see, leave a comment down below. Some of them do take a little bit more organization than others because I have to organize certain equipment for them or I need to go out of my own house to shoot it and therefore I need some assistance to help shoot it. But if you've got any ideas, leave them below. I'll pop them on a list and I'll see how I go. Was that a rhyme? Thank you so much, and I'll see you later. Hmm. No, the cider doesn't go in the bag, but if you're interested, that there is what I am drinking, and it is delicious.